So, konnichiwa and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, what I'll do this morning is I will share some thoughts regarding uh, experiences that I have in my previous roles that I've had both at the European Space Agency as head of Portugal Space, so the Portuguese National Space Agency, and um, of uh, now Neurospace. So we'll be taking you through, um, let's say, both policy elements, uh, legal aspects, uh, as well as technology elements. Um, the first thing I just wanted to share was, uh, indeed, we've heard it this morning already from uh, NASA. We heard it from the Department of uh, Commerce. Um, that the commercial dimension, of course, of space sustainability is uh, really quite uh, important. Um, now, when we started off thinking about uh, space debris at the European Space Agency, um, it wasn't something new, at least not when I entered uh, ESA, and had, there had been sort of lots of um, activities going on in technology development. And uh, one of the big things that ESA wanted to do at the time was uh, take down um, NVSAT um, uh, with a mission called ED Orbit. It was not easy at the time to get this mission underway, uh, partially because I believe um, that uh, member states and the community hadn't necessarily already recognized that space safety, sustainability was going to become uh, a market and uh, would become a market that is quite substantial. So that was uh, certainly an initial challenge. And when we then decided to move forward and establish a space safety program, one of the things that we embarked on doing was uh, um, trying to indeed emphasize this market dimension. Of course, it was nascent at the time, so people had to believe that it was coming. It's always hard to believe. And one of the big questions is always asked, and I guess is still asked, is who's going to pay for it? Um, indeed, so who's going to pay for it? And at the time, what we decided was that given that we know that there are objects in space that have to come down, um, and you may have seen this uh, specific publication, which identifies 50 of the most critical objects that are in space, um, some of the bigger ones, of course, which uh, pose a significant, significant threat. We had decided that the European Space Agency could uh, become a uh, customer. We had decided that uh, the European the European Space Agency uh, was going to be a customer. And that's how uh, we initiated um, a call for uh, industry so that they could um, propose missions to take down objects that um, belonged uh, or where ESA had um, ownership. Uh, putting ESA, if you will, in the customer seat. And I remember receiving a call from a journalist asking me, Chiara, what are you thinking? And uh, what I was thinking, or what ESA was thinking at the time, is if we believe that this is a market, then we shouldn't be pushing just the technology aspects. We need to push also for the economic dimension, for the economic side of things. And we did this by showing confidence that this market was going to come, but we also did it by innovation and procurement methods. And one of the things, one of the things that I believe really needs to be emphasized is that innovation really isn't just about technology. Innovation is also about roles, it's about procurement methods, and it's also about legal aspects. Now, um, going to the element of who's going to pay for it. Um, this news came out just recently uh, on how uh, there is a big contract for uh, bringing down at some point the ISS, and it's uh, quite a, a major contract if you look um, at the numbers. And um, out of spontaneity, um, sometimes I do come with, with crazy ideas. I was thinking, why can't we put up a, a fund, maybe in the ownership of the UN, uh, where uh, indeed contributing member states or uh, the community that's willing um, could com tackle the topic of space debris um, by taking care of those objects where people have ownership uh, maybe don't want to take care about it, uh, to resolve the issue of who's paying for it. So again, putting together perhaps a fund um, out of, uh, uh, of the UN could be certainly one solution. If we can put together so much money for taking down the LSS, I think that there is space for other elements to be done. So enough said about my time at ESA, I just wanted to talk about uh, Portugal for a second now. 
Uh, so when I moved to Portugal, one of the big elements, of course, if you are, let's say, a country with less financial viability is how do we, how do we leave our mark? Um, and one of the things that I had mentioned at the time to the Portuguese government was, of course, there are some new markets that are emerging. So if we want to leave a mark and we want to be uh, thought leaders but do more than be thought leaders, then it's about identifying these emerging uh, markets where there aren't any big global players. And space safety was indeed one of the um, elements that we ended up uh, pushing forward. Uh, we ended up supporting through the European Space Agency some contracts, uh, hoping that this would uh, put industry in uh, key roles uh, for future uh, missions that would be coming up. So just to give an example, uh, supporting some GNC elements or flight dynamic elements uh, regarding debris removal and in-orbit servicing, because of course the assumption there is, well, any mission is going to need GNC, uh, any mission is going to be uh, needing um, these elements and flight dynamics uh, as part of the brain behind the hardware. Now, at the time, uh, one of the things that was um, also going on, of course, was uh, bringing out uh, sort of a space law um, and uh, sort of bringing the country to a place where uh, we could have uh, regulation. And um, it's hard, uh, in a sense, uh, to be audacious um, and, uh, and, and bring forward big elements. We've seen um, the FCC in the US bring out uh, guidelines and rules uh, whereby now objects shouldn't stay in orbit longer than, um, well, than five years. We saw the FCC fine a company for not bringing down uh, an object. And um, again, here I was refle reflecting, if you have a big internal market, then potentially it's easier to bring out regulation because uh, we know that one of the elements that is always uh, terrifying is if you bring out regulation, how is it going to impact potentially uh, the, the business? Is it going to be something that's going to uh, be at the deterrence of further development or will it be something that's going to support? Um, so why am I mentioning all of this? Um, I believe that just as I said before, technology being uh, an element of innovation, we also need courageous, so I'm, I'm trying to encourage all the lawyers in the room, uh, to bring out innovation in legal and see regulatory aspects also as something that can evolve at a quick pace. Uh, which I know isn't always easy because generally means more people having to agree um, and it's not quite uh, the same as technology. But still, uh, I'd like us to encourage ourselves to have legal elements that can be updated more frequently as, we, as our understanding evolves and as we also have new technology elements that come into play. Now, um, to neurospace and also my other hat, uh, where I'm professor at the Technical University of Munich, uh, looking towards self-sustaining autonomous space activities uh, is one of the things that uh, obviously we want to do uh, at neurospace. I'll get to that in a second. We support uh, operators by providing SSA and space traffic management intelligence um, uh, included in operations in order to make sure that uh, operations can become more effective based on SSA and space traffic management intelligence that we uh, provide. At the Technical University of Munich, we're looking at new propulsion systems, for example, water-based propulsion systems, and we're trying to have these more versatile and also smaller because we know that, of course, there's many satellites that are going up uh, without propulsion systems. Hopefully, at some point, regulation will also fix this issue, but in until then, I do believe we need to have also an economic uh, sort of uh, incentive uh, to having propulsion systems on smaller spacecraft. Now, at uh, Neurospace, as I mentioned, uh, we, uh, we, we, we have a commercial product that we provide to satellite operators. Uh, we produce data, we ingest data from different sources. We just heard in the previous panel how hard it is, um, or it's seen as a techn technology challenge to correlate data from different sensors with different accuracy. Um, but I can tell you it's, it's something that can be done. So again, if there is a will, I think that there is a way in technology isn't the killing criteria here. Uh, we have a number of customers, as we see, 
And um, here, technology developments is going towards, uh, on the one hand, bringing further in intelligence through different data sources. On the other hand, uh, at least for us, uh, there's a key element which is uh, about bringing AI innovation to all of this. AI for um, now casting and forecasting. So, for example, we've developed an AI machine learning model for um, prediction of uncertainties, because as we know, that is a key issue when satellite operators have to decide whether they're going to move or not, um, then uh, one of the big questions is, of course, yeah, if my uncertainties are so big compared to my misdistance, why should I move in the first place? Any maneuver that I do is going to be a disruption to my service. So here we bring AI and machine learning elements uh, to the table to support that decision making. But we bring in, as I also mentioned, um, automation um, so that um, satellite operators have less of an impact in their day-to-day uh, -day operations um, and, and services that they need to be uh, providing. Now, um, I, as I said in the updated slides, I had a couple more elements that I wanted to share, um, uh, which are um, summarizing for me key elements to make sure that space safety and sustainability is a successful business. We have to make sure that the economic viability of the entire um, thing makes makes sense. I do believe that the community in the past had been focusing a lot on the aspect of sustainability from an environmental point of view, not so much on the business uh, side of things. So I, I, I again, I encourage more actors um, in this room and outside to um, help us think more about the economic dimension. And we've seen NASA bring out some studies. Um, I was talking to SP uh, and the OECD, I think, uh, can be doing more. So that's certainly the case. Um, I do believe, uh, again, summarizing that we need to be more audacious in the legal elements that br we bring out. Um, it's going to be hard in the longer run of probably having international agreements, uh, but I do believe that at a national level, um, the fear that it's going to have an economic impact on uh, sort of existing players uh, will probably be uh, outdone by the benefit to new players. So again, it should be seen as, as a global element, not uh, as an individual uh, just uh, point in time just right now. Um, and then the other element that, again, I wanted to mention is the public sector role is very important. Public uh, sector uh, support to the uh, development of commercial services is also very important. I think we do need clarity moving forward on what uh, public sector services are going to be. Um, this is sometimes a challenge uh, for us in, uh, in, in Europe, um, and I, I do hope that all the players in Europe will join forces in making sure that, again, commercial players that are eager to provide uh, key services will know what uh, public services will be uh, provided, building on that. And again, encouraging public sector players to renew their roles, um, we have many agencies, emerging agencies, established agencies, and uh, again, based on the experience that I've had, for agencies to continue supporting the growth of the space sector, they also need to renew themselves, grow, uh, change roles, and uh, maintain uh, their leadership role by reinventing themselves uh, so that the commercial sector can also be strong. So without uh, further ado, that's, uh, that's myself. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, comments, uh, feedback, then please do reach out. Thank you very much. Thank you.